Hi, and welcome back to the SwiftFox build channel and this another build update video. For the past few days, I've been working on installing the flight controls into the fuselage. And I have to say, this has been the most fun and exciting part of the build so far. It's been really cool adding in the mechanical elements and connecting them together and kind of seeing how they all uh, work together. So I'll start off with talking about the uh, Flapperon mixer. If you're not uh, aware of what a Flapperon is, it's basically, uh, it's, the word Flapperon is an amalgamation of uh, flaps and ailerons, wherein uh, kind of conventional aircraft on the wing, you'll have uh, flaps on the inboard section and ailerons on the outboard section. And these serve uh, different purposes. The Kitfox design utilizes a Flapperon, which is uh, a single control surfaces, surface that is both your flap and aileron. So instead of two separate control surfaces on the wing, you've got one, generally kind of the span of the wing, and it acts as, it acts as both. So in the kit fox here, we've got a Flapperon mixer, which is an assembly that controls how the flap and aileron kind of are working within the same uh, control surface. So I have the flap handle installed here, and if I you know, move the flap handle up and down, on the mixer, you can see the arm is moving up and down. And this arm is connected to a push rod that connects to the flapper on. And as you move this arm up and down, it's gonna change the uh, angle of attack of the flapper on um, so that it's, it's, it's you know, acting in a flap manner, either uh, you know, increasing or decreasing drag or lift. Then with the uh, aileron uh, mixer part of the uh, assembly, you can see that the, the arm is going uh, fore and aft on both sides. And again, attached to the push rod, this is gonna mean that the ailerons will kind of move in opposite directions so that you get your uh, you know, function out of the ailerons. So with the mixer, you can kind of see it all, it all working together and uh, it's pretty cool. I also have installed most of the push rods for the elevator. Um, I, haven't got it fully connected up because I ran out of uh, the bearing retaining compound, Loctite 680. Uh, so I haven't been able to install this rear uh, bell crank in. I've ordered some more though, and once it arrives, I will get it all, uh, all installed and hooked up. And I also uh, worked on the uh, control column and control sticks, which you can see here. I haven't uh, installed these into the fuselage yet because I did make a couple of mistakes uh, in the brackets that are used to mount these in, one pretty big one. Um, and that, that's this bracket here. And the big mistake I made was the control column attaches in here through a bolt that goes through this bushing that is in this bearing. And when I was installing the bushing, it was a little bit tight. And uh, in a momentary lapse of judgment, I pressed it in which was the complete wrong thing to do because the bushing doesn't now rotate or turn inside this bearing. What I should have done was I should have, you know, sanded the outside of the, uh, the bushing or maybe even reamed the, the bearing so that the bushing can fit in there with not a lot of play, but can rotate and turn. Once I had done it, I pretty much uh, knew I'd made a big mistake. And I, I have sent an email to Kitfox to order all new parts to build this bracket again. I could maybe get away with drilling out the bushing and getting an, another bushing to put it in, but there was a couple of other uh, you know, inaccuracies I did with this bracket that uh, I felt like I wanted to correct. Uh, mostly with these uh, mounting holes uh, where it uh, mounts into the fuselage. They're not quite centered enough uh, on the bracket here. Um, uh, to my liking, it's kind of hard to, you know, get onto the head of the, the bolt and, and the nut. So I'd like to redo them and get them uh, more accurate. With the, uh, the other side of the control column is held in with this plastic uh, bearing block. And I'm also not happy with the second hole I drilled uh, for it. It's very much off center, which means that the, um, the cylindrical hole here isn't perfectly gonna match up with the, the cylinder of the control column. So there'll be some rubbing that I would need to sand out. And, and by doing that, I'm gonna make the, the uh, there'll be a little bit of play and, and wobble. And I don't want that. These, this is a very critical part of the, uh, the airframe. Uh, so for both of these brackets, I just wanna do them again uh, a little bit more accurate. I did find it a little difficult um, 
back drilling up for the brackets. Like I'd mentioned, I, I didn't get them quite aligned uh, correctly. So uh, I'm gonna maybe think about it at another method or, or ways of improving it. What I found I struggled with the most was actually getting the bracket clamped in, like clamped solidly in place. And then with the drill having enough pressure coming up from the bottom, there's enough space down here for the drill with the stand, um, but getting the drill oriented correctly and then uh, the pressure up uh, was a little difficult. So they're all things I'm gonna think about while I'm waiting uh, for the, the replacement parts to come. Other than that, I'm actually going to be taking a bit of a break right now. I'm heading home home to go to a friend's wedding. I'm really looking forward to that. So building is going to take a pause for about two weeks. And then when I come back, uh, what I think I'll work on is the uh, center console section here. And then the uh, door, door frames and these uh, rear triangular windows as well. So uh, that's what I'll probably do uh, along with, uh, you know, if these uh, replacement parts come in, I'll, I'll put those in and get them done. But uh, that's pretty much all for now. I'm going to take this break and, and be back at it in a couple of weeks. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.